Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Success Great Podcast with your host Hussein Talib. I have a special guest today. We are going to talk about productivity. Alexis Hazelberger, she's a time management and productivity coach who helps people do more and stress less. Alexis' approach helps you to easily integrate practical, realistic strategies into your life so that you can do more of what you want and less of what you don't. Alexis' clients include Google, Lyft, Capital One, Upwork, and many more. Alexis, welcome to the grid. Thank you so much for having me. Happy to talk to you today. Awesome. Awesome to have you here. So as I mentioned, you are a productivity coach and you worked with a lot of clients, big one actually. So tell us a little bit about you and why did you choose to go into productivity and be a productivity coach? Yeah, I'm happy to. So I spent, I I live in San Francisco. I spent the first um, 15 years or so of my career working in early stage startups Uh, here in the Bay Area and doing a lot of consulting uh, with some startups and things as well. And what I realized over that time was that people uh, burn out (laughs) really fast. (laughs) They work really long hours, not necessarily always as efficiently as they could. And for me, I just knew, you know, I just knew that like, I I didn't want to do that. Like, (laughs) I didn't want to work really crazy hours. Like I wanted Mm. to have, I wanted to be excellent at work to produce excellent work, to get everything done, you know, that I needed to. And I also wanted to do that within a regular business day. And so I, I think I've always been someone who's very focused on high ROI for time and making mm. sure that I am spend, you know, spending that time in a way that um, is useful and, and that I don't have a lot of distractions and things like that. And people just started coming to me for this type of advice over mm. time, right? Cool. They, they saw that, you know, oh, like she's able to get all this stuff done and she's not working here until like 9 p.m. every night. Like what's going on, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, you know, I, I remember at one job that somebody asked me who was, you know, I was working with um, the city and somebody, you know, not, I was not working at the city, but I was working with somebody and he was like, how many hours a week do you work? You know, 60, 70? And what? I said, I work 30 hours a week. Okay, and he cool. Was like, what? <laughs> So I think people just started coming to me for that. And eventually I realized that, oh, like this is a skill set that I have that not a lot of other people seem to, to have and that I could teach that to other people to help them have more fulfilling lives and still be amazing at work, right? Yeah. Like we don't have to sacrifice that piece to have a fulfilling life. Yeah, inside. exactly. Like you mentioned long hours. I, I, I noticed that if you, for example, your job is like nine to five or nine to four, if you go beyond these kind of hours, like you said, 60 or 80, that's very long. If you go beyond these hours, you are not going to be any, you are not going to do any work. You're just gonna, yeah. especially especially if you have some other uh, employee, other teammate with you in the room, you are gonna, going to say, oh, what do you think we should order for uh, lunch? Another <laughs> lunch, that's another one. Like right. uh, one day after the one day after 1 p.m. Uh, yeah. And they keep talking about, so there is nothing work won't be done. It's, not, it's much less. So like you mentioned, is this kind of blocks of time that you should put for yourself or in your work and achieve in that time, right? Yeah, yeah that's how I felt. I and mean, not everybody, I mean, some people really like, you know, just kind of this integration and work of, and life and having, you know, kind of going back and forth. But I think a lot of people, I mean, I, th- I think the people who really like that often are like entrepreneurs where their work is their baby, right? Versus, uh, you know, a lot of people who are employees, et cetera, like I, you know, I, I, I wanted to do well, but I didn't like, I wasn't living to work, right? And so, I, so yeah, for me, it was, became really important to say, okay, if I'm gonna be here eight hours a day, I'm gonna get as much as humanly possible done within those eight hours. Mm. And then I don't wanna think about work again until the next day. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. This is what, what I think. So we're talking about here, for example, for employees who actually, let's say they have certain amount of time to do the work and you mentioned entrepreneurs and business owners. Mm-hmm. So yourself, when you transform to be an entrepreneur and mm-hmm. for people who want to transform being an entrepreneur. So basically you are on your own now. There is no mm-hmm. like a boss telling you what to do. So what advice would you tell them, these guys who are new? Yeah. So I think it's so easy when you're really like enjoying the work that you're doing to get into that zone where you're working more than more than maybe you want to, because you're kind of interested in the problems that you're solving and you're you're working towards your own goals instead of towards somebody else's. And so I actually found it much like 
it was harder for me to have boundaries for myself when I started my business because I found that in the previous world working for someone else, there was literally never a time where on a Saturday I would think, oh, I would like to be doing some work right now. Like that never happened, right? <laughs> no, of course, no. <laughs> no. It, 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 to me, eventually it's not my business. It's someone yeah. else's business. So no matter how what you were good at it or you want to devote yourself to it, eventually yeah. it's not your business. It's not your business. And so like, I, I never had that thought. And then once I started my own business, there would be sometimes, you know, on a Saturday or in an evening where I would actually want to work. Like, it wasn't like I felt like I had to do it. I was like, oh, but like, I'm very excited about working on this thing and I would want to do it. And so for me, I actually had to create some boundaries because I, I knew that if I worked all the time and didn't have enough rest in between or just enough like mental space <laughs> to have life and, you know, to hang out with my kids. I know my kids would not appreciate if I'm working like all of the time either. I had to actually <laughs> just create boundaries for myself. So even as an entrepreneur, I don't work on the weekend. I don't work on evenings. Oh, I don't check, totally. You know, I don't check email on the weekend or evenings. I have an out of office reply that tells people I'm not checking email on the weekends. And so I really had to create some of these boundaries for myself that just exist in, you know, when I work for other people. Mm, cool. So basically you're having times or blocks of time for certain things to do, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, so you're, you're basically kind of planning things. So how do you plan when you don't know what do you, what to plan for? You know, sometimes we want to do certain things, but we actually don't know the specific of these things, right? How to do that? in your opinion, or how to start when you know where to, where someone does not know where to start, which is the, let's say the priority, let's say one, two, three, right? Yeah. So I think that, you know, what I do is I have a, a task system at work for projects and tasks and things. And every, um, this keeps track of everything. It's like my external brain. It keeps track of all the follow-ups. It keeps track of the big stuff. It keeps track of the ideas. It has everything in there. Um, and what I do is every quarter, I will do some quarterly planning and I will say like, what are my goals for the mm. next quarter? What am I trying to do? And then, you know, sometimes those things are things I literally have no idea how to do, right? <laughs> and so, um, so then I really try to break it down so that I might not know all of the steps, but I can always define the first step. To mm. And if mm. you don't know what the first step is, then your first step is Google it <laughs> or ask somebody or put you know, time on your calendar to brainstorm about it. But like, there's always a first step. And so I, I don't try to plan everything all at once. I really plan on more of a, like I, I take goals at a quarter level and then on a daily and weekly basis, I'm saying, okay, what are my goals for the week? What am I trying to get done during this time? And then on any given day, what are the exact next steps I'm going to take mm. to push it forward? Because the more clear we can be, like, have you ever had this, this type of thing where like something's on your, you got to do it. You don't know how to do it. So you just keep pushing it off. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah I, then, I especially know that when we are, when I, I'm sure everyone does it when they were students, especially in universities, yeah. even like, for example, you have uh, an exam. You yeah. keep pushing studying until the last day of the, before the exam. Right. So that, that everyone does right. that. Yeah. So everyone does this, right? And like sometimes there are these things where it's not, you know, it's not due for three weeks, so it doesn't matter, right? Like the exam, <laughs> for three weeks, it doesn't matter. And then all of a sudden it's the day before the thing is due and you're like, oh my gosh, oh, I have okay. to yeah. do it, right? <laughs> and then sometimes when you do that thing, you sit down, you finally figure out what the steps are to how to do it. It takes like 20 minutes. And then you ask yourself, like, why did I stress about this for the last three weeks? <laughs> when exactly. True, very like true, yeah. Task, right? And so I think when we break things down into smaller pieces, even if we don't know all the steps, if we can just define the next step, then, you know, after we do that step, the step after that is obvious, right? Yeah, and it's so gonna, going to, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be mostly automatic. Yeah, it's right. true. So, yeah. so uh, morning routines, what's your look on that? Because... We all have seen a lot of YouTube videos, a lot of people talking about uh, morning routine and how important it is to wake at 5 a.m., 6 a.m., uh, maybe 7 a.m., <laughs> some people 4 a.m. So what do you think about this? So how I think if that's something that works really well for you, go ahead and do it. Mm. For me, that like I my morning routine is hit the snooze 15 times, <laughs> um, <laughs> finally get, you know, finally get up, like 
<laughs> and that when I have to, when I have to take my kids to school and it's like brush my teeth, put on clothes and get coffee. Like that's it. I have like a very pared down morning routine. And this is because I am not a morning person. Mm. Like I am a night person. Mm. I am not like, like I'm not my best in the morning. And so what I found over time is that it is far better for me to sleep <laughs> and get a good night's sleep than it is to like meditate and exercise in the morning and all of these things. And I think what people kind of get wrong about the morning routine, I think, is that they think that all like all these things they're doing, like meditation and journaling and you know, exercise and all these are all good things to do, but there's no reason that they need to be done in the morning. Mm, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Like, if you're not a morning person why why do that to yourself yeah <laughs> I, don't, yeah, I don't understand exactly. so, yeah yeah that's i know I, I know how you is that because me myself i've been like uh, what they call a night owl a long time i i used to <laughs> sleep a lot of the day like yeah. i wake up maybe 12 2 a.m because i work at night and my 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 productivity starts after 12 p.m right so i mostly <clears throat> Uh, sleep at uh, until the morning and the afternoon and work starting at night and go for example to the gyms and do my sports like at night so mm -hmm. some people like you mentioned it's not like for everyone right. waking up early is good and you can it can be good and it's not sometimes it cannot be good depending on who you are so that's awesome yeah. this is how you work with your clients you get to know them and see how what's best that works for them right yeah, exactly. Because everyone is, I mean, that's why it like people feel often like they're failing because there's all this productivity advice out there that they they try and it's like written about like it's the most amazing thing. And if you just do this, everything will be better. But like we don't, you know, the, it's written for the person who has that life and who has that brain. Mm -hmm. And so there are useful tidbits, but we need to kind of what I do is help shepherd people to say, okay, since we know this about you. Let's let's do this an easier way. <laughs> let's let's try to figure out who you are yeah. and then build strategies for who you actually are. Because I think, you know, we've all had that experience where we can bend ourselves for a little bit, right? Like you as a night owl, me as a night owl. Like I bet we've all had to go to classes at a certain, you know, early yeah. in the morning. And we uh, can do it. But then what happens when you go, you know, on the weekends or <laughs> when you go on vacation? You snap back to who you are. Right? Uh, exactly. Yeah. This yeah, but, but I don't know, some people talk about this biological clock, like, for mm -hmm. example, on the weekends, you can stay all night if you have an early example the next day or not or early lecture for certain. Yeah. Of course, now college is over. But if yeah. you have certain situation that's going on, what do you think of this biological clock? Do you yeah, have any I, look on that? Yeah, I mean, I think people really do have an internal clock right mm. and that they're different right some people really are morning people and they wake up with the sun and they're excited to get out of bed and you know that's like and, and they also go to bed really early like I you know I know someone who mm. she wakes up at 5 a.m not with an alarm like she just her body wakes up okay. and she does a bunch of stuff before work and then she's in bed at 8 p.m right because oh, she's is... tired and so for me it's like the complete opposite like I you know if I'm on vacation I sleep till around 10 in the morning and then I usually am going to bed at you know I don't know midnight or two I mean I'll give you an example my dad who is 75 years old mm -hmm. and who worked a whole life in the government like where you know he had a job where he had to get up and be there at 7 30 you know all of that when he retired several years ago he has gone back to his natural rhythm which is to stay up until three or four every day and sleep until noon as a <laughs> 75 year old man like that is his routine right and so I think these things are really inside of us. And a lot of people try to say like, oh, you can change it. Mm -hmm. And maybe yeah. you can with a whole lot of effort and pain, but I don't know why, like, I don't want to do that. Like, I don't, I want to just kind of work with what I am instead yeah. of trying to change who I am. That's exactly. You, you need to find the tweaks that works for you. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. So like we talked about some some task might take you that we can postpone it weeks on and weeks on. And eventually it could take, for example, 10 minutes. Yeah. But on the other side, why some things might take longer than expected yeah. or planned for? Why do you think how that happens? Well, I think humans are pretty bad time estimators <laughs> in general. Um, and most of us are like kind of overly ambitious about how like how much time we are overly optimistic 
um, for a number of reasons. Like one, because our, you know, our brains are just thinking we can get it done faster. We're also not counting, like we're not thinking about all the interruptions that may happen or the other things that might mm. prevent us or the roadblocks that we're gonna run into, mm. et cetera. So I think with the example of, you know, you push this thing and then it takes only 10 minutes, much longer. Well, you didn't have an accurate view of that because you didn't know what it was going to entail, right? Mm. So you, you couldn't even estimate it because, you know, there was, there's nothing there. I think with other things, it's like, no, we've done them before. So we have an idea of how mm. long yeah, it's exactly. going to take, but we're wrong <laughs> um, because we're overly optimistic. And I think what I found is that most people have a pretty consistent ratio by which they're off. So for me, I know I'm like a 1.5 X. So if I think something is gonna take an hour, it almost always takes 90 minutes. And oh. so now I just know that about myself. And so I block 90 minutes instead of an hour because it's not that my brain actually thinks like gets better at estimating. It's that I just have to apply a multiplier. Yeah. I know other people who are like, everything takes them three times as long as they think. Oh, okay. And so for them, when they're planning, they just need to book three times as much time. Right? Mm. And it's not that they're going to necessarily like get better at it, but they can apply the right math. Mm, yeah, cool. But but that, does does focus come into play here? Do you think because you're taking, for example, you know you you know yourself, you block one hour and a half for for example, an hour things to do to make sure that it's done at a maximum of ninety minutes. But mm -hmm. some people ten x that, some people maybe five that. So is focus important here? Because sometimes we do certain things and like like you mentioned. Yeah, I um, I want to go grab a sandwich. I want to go talk to a friend. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to I want to do something that is completely not related to the things that you are doing right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's another good point, right? If we are not counting in all the other things that we're going to be doing, then it's definitely going to take longer. And I really I believe pretty strongly in just doing one thing at a time, because there's so much research that suggests that multitasking isn't something we can do. Uh, there, there is a, there is a lot of things they say that always women are better in multitasking than men. Is that true? <laughs> no, it's a lie because nobody can multitask. Nobody can multitask. Like it's just context switching really fast. And so actually when people try to multitask, regardless of their gender, it tanks your productivity by about 40%. Oh, okay. Oh, how much? Oh, whoa. Yes. And so it's like, the more that you can just do the thing you're doing and then move on to the next thing, you'll get all of those things done faster. Mm, yeah. um, there's also a lot of research that's, uh, that shows that when we get distracted, so like whether it's because we're working on something and then we get a ding from our email and we go into email and you know now we answer the email and then mm. we come email, whatever, that it takes us on average 23 minutes to refocus on what we were doing every time we're interrupted. Well, so maybe the, the one hour task might be turned out to six hours now. Right. If you, I mean, if you're just interrupted constantly, right? And so I think that's focus does come into it. Like if if we can do one thing at a time, we don't have those productivity losses mm. that we see from multitasking. We also, if we can kind of limit the distractions in our environment, if we can turn off notifications and things like that, then we don't have those external things that are taking us out of what we're doing and we can get things done a lot more efficiently. Mm, cool. So, but at the same time, we do not want to keep focusing until we are burned out. So, no. <laughs> so how to avoid that? Well, I think so. Okay. So I think we need to take breaks, right? Breaks are really important. And we often take unintentional breaks, right? Where we find ourselves uh, mm. down our internet rabbit hole and we've been there for 45 minutes or whatever. And that doesn't feel as good. Um, but taking really kind of strategic breaks. So when you feel yourself getting unfocused or it's just hard, you know, and we want to say just, just double down, <laughs> just focus, right? right? It doesn't work. And so if you feel yourself getting uh, unfocused or if you feel yourself wanting to, you know, go do something else, actually get up, go take a break, like a five or a 10 minute break, go get a coffee, go walk around the block, go, you know, take your, like, I don't know, look at cat videos or something, right? Like, <laughs> no, that, that's, go <laughs> that's going to be like five hours watching cat videos. But you got to put a timer, got to put a timer for yourself. So you come back, right? Um, and then you, so all the research shows that when we come back from a break, from a real intentional true break, that we have more creativity, we have more focus, and we have more productivity. And so I think building those in and kind of knowing when, or, you know, maybe it's like just between meetings, right? You say, okay, instead of like 
trying to go answer as many emails as I can in these three minutes between meetings. Instead, you're saying, okay, I'm going to just do some deep breathing for a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. um, this can be really helpful in making sure that we get in breaks throughout the day. Mm. So that brings me to, like you mentioned, you do, for example, a quarterly planning or something like that. So uh, how working with your clients, how long do you recommend them to plan ahead? A month, three months, six months, the, or depending on the situation or person? Well, I think it really depends on what people, so I think like for a lot of people, I mean, most businesses will have some sort of quarterly planning practice, right? And depending on what someone's role is, they may or may not have a whole lot to say about that, right? They might just get their goals handed to them <laughs> and then they have to figure it out from there. So I think the most helpful planning is kind of daily and weekly planning to really yeah. figure out like, what are you gonna do specifically? Because the reality is like, yes, I do quarterly planning, but I'm not planning out the entire quarter. I'm saying like, these are my goals. And what am I gonna do this week? You know, like what are kind of the milestones here? And then there's more granular planning that happens on a weekly yeah. and daily basis. And I think that's the part that's really important mm. because otherwise it's so easy to just start every day with email, get to the end of the day, realize you've worked hard all day, but you didn't cross anything off your list because you've just been kind of responding to people, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, this is uh, cool because actually small steps what reaches make someone reach their goals right you mm -hmm. cannot reach any goal like from one jump to it exactly okay. so <clears throat> do you think like uh, motivation and willpower has to do with anything like we mentioned focus but motivation and yeah i want to do that we we get like it's like a, a red bull you get like energy if you are asleep for five minutes and then it's like you want to sleep after it so <laughs> So, yeah, what's willpower? Uh, is it willpower have to do with that? I mean, I think that willpower and I think we try to rely too much on willpower and motivation. I actually think that planning can replace a lot of what's required from willpower and motivation and is a lot more effective. So, for instance, like, you know, when you start the day, right, the beginning of the day, you have a lot of willpower, right? <laughs> and it hasn't been eroded yet. And so, um, so like you can make good decisions about your time, but as the day goes on, willpower erodes and we make worse and worse decisions <laughs> about, about things to do. Right. Mm. And so I think it's, it's relying on that is kind of a losing game. Instead, if the day before we plan out what we're going to do today, we don't have to rely on willpower or motivation because now we're just executing our plan. Right. Mm. We just, we've already decided what we're doing. We have already broken it down into small steps. So nothing feels like big or overwhelming. And now we just do the things on the list, right? Yeah, exactly. um, instead of having to like muster up the energy. I think what a lot of people do is they work on something and then they get to a stopping point and then they say, okay, what should I do next? Mm. And then they have to like muster up all that energy again, right? Yeah, exactly. And that's just exhausting all day long. Mm. Um, and there are other things, right? Where like, if I asked you, um, do you want to do your taxes right now? <laughs> you know, like you would never no. say yes never right like there's never going to be a time that you would say yes but in fact you have to do your taxes right and so being able to plan that in advance removes that kind of in the moment do I want to or do I not want to because we don't often make the right decision when we're asking ourselves what do we want to do mm -hmm. it's very different from what we need to do yeah definitely so that's 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 basically habits coming in and playing a role into these kind of things because if you do certain things for a while it it especially on repetitive things it will take you to do them on time mm -hmm. let's say for example right so habits having habits is important building habits yeah i think habit building is really important because the more we what habits do is they remove the need to make decisions around mm. things, right? like a habit is an automatic process and yeah. so if you have habits that are not serving you well, then your life is just kind of like going slightly down all the time, right? If you have habits that are serving you, that are serving you and that are good for you, then like you don't have to work very hard to make the good things happen. Mm. And so the more you can build habits that support you, then it's like you're doing, you're doing the quote right things without having to try very hard. Yeah, and like yeah, and sometimes uh, decision making can take uh, <laughs> hours of time, right. and uh, and some discussions. If you have a business and a group, and you do a meeting, and the meeting goes for six hours, and nothing is decided yet. 
Right, right. And you, and then everyone, and then you have to make another meeting, right? And, <laughs> Yeah. Or you have a meeting about the meeting. Right? <laughs> yeah, that happens a lot. Yeah. yeah. And I see that in corporations, like a lot of meetings happen only not to make work easier or better. It's just when someone makes a mistake, that only the reason for most like 50% of meetings. When an employee makes a mistake, there's a meeting. Oh, interesting. I feel yeah. like what I see a lot in meetings is meetings that are like informational in nature. Like, yeah. There's all these like status update meetings and weekly meetings. Like I think those things are like the, kind of the bane of existence because yeah. you're just taking up time on your calendar. And if it's just a status update, send it out in an email, mm. right? Like people can consume that asynchronously. We don't need to be getting everybody in a room to give everyone an update on what's happening. So I think like in, information dissemination meetings are typically not a good use of people's time. And then there's also like with a lot of my clients, they're in, they might be in like four different meetings during the week that are all status update meetings where they're just giving status updates to different people, like to different groups of people, right? And like, this is a huge amount of time that's being taken up. And then there's also this concept of having like a recurring meeting and it doesn't have an agenda. And yeah. so we just meet every week. There's no real reason, like, but we're still meeting. Sometimes there's something to talk about. Sometimes there's not much to talk about. And that's taking a valuable space on people's calendars. Yeah, exactly. So what tips do you have to be more productive? How do you work with your clients? Do you have mm -hmm. a certain system that you follow? How do you do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I have, um, when I work one-on-one -on -one with clients, I have a, uh, a four-month coaching program. And I kind of walk them through um, an arc of strategies. And so right. at each point, we're talking about like what's going to work well for them. But essentially the arc looks like first, knowing yourself better, exactly as you are, so that we can, you know, we can learn a little bit about you. We can know, you know, what strategies might work and use that later. Then we move into task management um, and project management. There's just like, how, what are all the things and how are we going to keep track of all the things so we don't have to remember mm. it, right? Mm. We move into prioritization because, you know, I think a lot of people think, well, I just want to be able to finish my to-do list, right? That's impossible. Nobody's ever <laughs> going to finish their to-do list, right? Like we are all going to die with a big wall <laughs> of things we didn't do. That's just what's going to happen. And so prioritization is really important because we have to be able to take this list, this interminable list of things and say, okay, what things are we going to do? What things are we not going to do? Which things do we need to do first? Which things do we need to do later? And we want to be able to feel really confident at the end of every day that the things we did today were more important than the things we didn't do. Because mm. there's always mm. going to be things we didn't do. Yeah, sometimes, and, and sometimes if you do things that are not important the next day or in the evening, you, you kind of regret it. Oh, I didn't yeah. do anything for my business. So it becomes right. guilt, maybe. I don't know. Right. But, yeah, yeah, like, why didn't I do the important thing? Like, why did I do the easy thing and not this? Um, then we move into planning. So all the different types of planning we've already talked about. We move into our tools. So email, calendar, task management, documents, like really making sure that these are set up to work for us instead of the opposite. Mm -hmm. um, we move into habit building because a lot of the things we're trying to do are around building habits and, and we need science-backed strategies that are not relying on motivation and willpower because that <laughs> is a losing, it's a losing battle. Um, then we move into efficiency. So we're talking about templates and outsourcing and delegation and batch processing and kind of how do we take that eight hours of work and be as efficient as possible during it and then finally we move into focus um, and focus and distractions and you know sometimes people say well why don't you do focus first like wouldn't that mm. be isn't that what people need people don't know what to focus on <laughs> like this is what <laughs> yeah yeah especially, especially nowadays it's very true we are like distracted by anything mobiles emails everything is like we are uh, we want to be everywhere at the same time which is right. impossible you know? right exactly and so I, I kind of take people through that arc and the goal is that they then have a working productivity system so a set of strategies that work really well for their life but they've also kind of learned all of this stuff so that when their life changes again, which it will, right? They'll get a new job, they'll have a baby yeah. they'll across the country or whatever, that they are able to kind of reform their strategies to meet their new solutions or mm. new situations. And so, well, that's yeah. cool. So, so you're speaking of systems and uh, some applications maybe. Do you have favorite apps that help you do that? Yeah, so that I, you know, I think what I'll say is, 
productivity is not tool-based, right? There are tools that can help us, but there's no like holy grail of like, if you need to use this or else you're not gonna be productive. I think like people need to use the tools that, um, that really support them in their work. And there's no one size fits all. That being said, there is what, like I reviewed probably 50 different task apps. And there is one that I recommend most frequently to most of my clients. And it is Tick Tick. Mm. Not TikTok, something <laughs> totally different. Tick Tick, T I C K T I C K dot com. And this is a great um, task management system because it's very easy to use. It's free. It syncs on your devices. It's like platform agnostic. And it really helps people to kind of get everything out and then prioritize in a date-based fashion. So we're mm, giving cool. ourselves only things we can do. So that's, oh, my, yeah. that's my favorite tool. Yeah. Actually speaking, and it syncs, of course, with the calendars. And me, since using calendars, I since like six months ago, it actually improved a lot of things because I know a lot of things that at certain times. So that yeah. having a calendar is, is cool. <laughs> Yes, having a calendar is essential. I wasn't even thinking of that as a tool. Yes, yes, you have to have a calendar. <laughs> yeah, awesome. So uh, what would you say one takeaway from this episode, Alexis? So, I mean, I think if I could give something to your listeners, it is don't rely on your memory. Yeah. Like, this, is not, this is not a way to get things done. Use some sort of, you, use anything, any app you want. You can use TikTok if you want, but like any task management tool that helps you to remove things from your brain so that you can look at them and prioritize them and decide about them is going to be really helpful and reduce a lot of stress. Yeah, exactly. Having things written is better. And yeah. relying on memory is like, it happened to me a lot, actually, when there's one thing or two things that I want to do the next day, I didn't do it. But it's like in your back of your mind, I wanted to do something yesterday, but what is it? What is it? You keep thinking an hour about what did you want to right. do and <laughs> you forget it's like gone. So yeah. it's important and to you have it yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like you have this kind of sinking feeling of, I know I'm missing something, but I don't know what it is. And I don't know when it's going to come back to bite me. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Alexis, when can people get in touch with you? So the best way is via my website, which is alexishasselberger.com. So I hope you'll put that in the show notes because no one yeah, will be able well. to spell it. Um, and I'm also on Instagram at do.more.stress.less and then on Facebook at do more stress less. Mm, awesome. Well, thank you for being here on this episode, Alexis. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to talk to you.